In this video, I want to talk about Docker containers. And I don't want to get too in depth with Docker containers, but at the same time, I'm assuming that you already know Docker containers. So what I want to do is this most likely for someone that uh, has been using Docker, but sometimes is kind of confused on everything that's going on. Um, uh, this is like the basics, but at the same time, understanding, really understanding the basics. So I think the way I can solve this problem is by kind of uh, having a goal, doing an example, and hopefully uh, you can understand. So what I'm doing is, is to have a goal, which is to uh, have Ubuntu Linux and run it on my Mac as a container. So that is the goal. So the goal is to get um, Ubuntu Linux and run it on my Mac as a container. So the first thing that you want to do is do a Docker search Ubuntu or any service. So technically, actually like this. So technically what happens here is Docker is going to tr search the official Docker Hub registry for any services. This could be RabbitMQ, this could be Microsoft Server, this can be uh, Ubuntu Linux, and it's going to search all the uh, services and registries uh, that it has. And if it has Linux, then it will give that to me, and it will also give me uh, their tags, certain versions, and you can have your own version, and it will show me that. And usually the top result is usually the latest one or the most official one. So here I will have Ubuntu. And that all pretty much showed up. So I can see that the first one is Ubuntu as the name, pretty much over 10,000 stars, is official. And I can pretty much pull it is the Ubuntu, the Debian based Linux operating system. So I know that Docker has it in the registry. There's other ones that you can download. And if there's any other service that you want, you can just change that Ubuntu with the service that you want and see if it's in the Docker Hub. So how do you pretty how do we get this? So technically all we have to do is do docker pull ubuntu and then here we will have the tag. Um, and we're just going to grab the latest one. So that pulls it and then once it pulls everything, then it pulls an image cuz all these Anything you pretty much pull from the registry is an image. The container is the, is once you start running that image, it turns into a container. So any image that you have, you have Rabbit, uh, Rabbit MQ image, you have this micro micro uh, Microsoft SQL image. If you want to run that, you have to run an instance of it, which that instance is a container. So what I can do is do Docker images, and these are all the images on my computer. And I, as I can see right here. Ubuntu latest did get uh, downloaded um, on my machine. And I think I already, if anything, I already had it. But if anything for you, it would say, you know, created a couple seconds ago. But I did have that uh, Ubuntu uh, already. So, but you can type Docker images and see uh, all the images that you have on your computer. So, once we have that, our second goal is. Um, to pretty much run our container. Um, and obviously when we run our container, uh, we'll be able to actually run a full Linux. Well, mostly like a semi Linux system because obviously containers are lightweight. So we'll be able to run like a semi Linux system on my Mac, which is pretty much the whole point of dockers and containers. It, they're like small VMs on your computer. So what I want to do is I want to um, be able to run this, um, you know, to stop, to uh, to start the container, run all these commands, and hopefully um, it makes you understand what's going on. So what I'm going to do is to actually run this container is I have to pull up an instance from this Ubuntu instance. So how do I do that? I do docker container run technically I'll have options here my container the tag and the way I'm gonna execute it so I'm gonna repeat this couple of times um, but or actually run not run run 
actually creates and executes my container where starts um, just uh, starts a stopped container and obviously we're gonna go through this example uh, a couple of times so it can be pretty much stuck in your head uh, so you can know uh, what's going on so back to this example the docker container run for now I'm just gonna put the options IT but my container is Ubuntu and then my tag is latest and then I want to run this on the bash shell so what's gonna happen is docker is container is gonna run Ubuntu latest on the bash and wow as you can see I now am running a docker container Ubuntu uh, container on my Mac and as you can see I'm gonna run LS and you guys can see I'm really running uh, a semi uh, formal uh, Linux and if you guys can see if you know how this is running I'm gonna open a new window and do docker ps and you guys can see here that this is a container ID uh, docker ps just gives me the the process the docker processes uh, happening or, op or currently open Ubuntu latest bash created 20 cents 26 seconds ago uh, and pretty much uh, believe this is the name um, of it but we'll just be using the container ID and it is running and as you can see it's running and we can uh, go around um, I'm actually gonna go here to temp uh, and in temp it's empty and uh, what I want to do is actually add a file so I'm gonna do um, here here I am new file and then do ls and as you can see that file got added to uh, the Linux container so you can mess around download things run commands like top as you can see this is all running in the Linux uh, I can run um, PS those are my processes running in my uh, Linux container and you can just download things run things it's pretty amazing actually uh, I'm running a Linux in my Mac by just running a, a docker container uh, so what can I do now so actually I want to exit out of this container because I want to show you how to stop run uh, restart these containers uh, so what I want to do is you can either exit and if you exit it actually exits exits out from the process or what I can do is do uh, control plus PQ and it doesn't stop uh, the container process it runs in the background so what I'm gonna do is just do exit and then in another example I'll do control PQ so I'm just gonna do exit takes me back and then here I could do docker ps and as you can see my Ubuntu Linux is not running anymore because I exited out the process so you can look at my docker container and that's I have no docker container this the only one that you put docker container ls it tells you how the docker container is currently in process or even do docker docker ps docker container ls it does the same thing but if you want to see actually my latest or all my stopped uh, containers I could do container uh, docker con container um, ls and I could do a and that will show me all the stopped but if I do la it's just gonna show me the latest one so actually I think I spelled it wrong so here the latest one is the Ubuntu so that's uh, stopped and what I can do is I can you know uh, start it and then I can stop it and then if I actually want to run it then I'll have to start it and execute it so here I'm just gonna do this a couple of times what I'm gonna do is do docker container start 5f9 
and then I'm going to do Docker PS. And then you can see now this container is running. And then I could do Docker uh, container uh, stop. 5f9 and 5f9 is just the first three uh, container IDs number. I can either call it by its name, which here I believe is Dazzling Dazzy, or you can name it that container whatever you want, or you can just use the whole container ID or most likely the first three. So I can stop it. So I can do Docker PS and now it's not running anymore. And I'm going to start it again Docker container start. What is it? F and then Docker PS. So um, so far, Docker uh, run is to to start and execute. And if you don't have the image in your computer, it will uh, download it for you. And then Docker stop where it stops your container and then docker start where it starts your container um, so they're pretty much some of the commands that we can use uh, docker start docker stop and then docker execute to execute it so let's actually do that so docker ps let's see if it's running it is running so let me stop it, start it, and then execute it. So I'm gonna do docker stop, or docker container stop 5f9, docker ps, my container's not running. What I can do is do docker container ls la, see my latest container, because if I do dash a, it's gonna show me a whole bunch of containers that I have stopped. So I see that these are this is my latest stopped container. I'm going to do docker start 5f9 docker ps it's running and to execute it I'll just do docker container exec it 5f9 and my bash and now I'm in my bash and look I can go back to temp and my file is there you guys can see new file says here I am so the data is actually persistent uh, throughout this whole process. So what we can do is I'm actually going to do control PQ. So I'm going to do control PQ. So control PQ. Oops. Let me see. And let me see. Oh, yep. And since I did control PQ, my container didn't. Uh, exit out is still running so it didn't stop by me doing control PQ so what I want to do is I want to remove it so to remove this container uh, all I do is uh, actually what I the, the two steps to removing it is to stop the container and then delete the container so to stop the container, all I do is docker stop 5f9, and then I do docker remove 5f9. And sometimes you can do dash f for if you want to force it. Um, and then since we're not really talking about images, but if it was an image, it would be an i here. But since we're just talking about containers, we just do this. And then when I go to docker ps, that is removed. And if I do docker container ls la which is my, my latest one it, it shouldn't be the ubuntu anymore and it's not it's this old thing that i've been running so to recap um we did docker run which pretty much runs executes my container and if anything hasn't been downloaded it downloads it for you i pretty much did a docker start docker execute docker uh, remove docker stop and to do the inspection uh, why to of all my stop containers it was docker container ls a or la and obviously in the beginning when I did a docker search to search uh, any 
uh, images that were in the Docker hub. Uh, so those are just basic things that uh, you can do. And also if what you can do is more advanced is do like, um, you could do Docker container 33, let's say 5F9, and I can have like a restart. And there's pretty much three restart commands. Um, actually, the three restart commands are actually always unless stopped and on failed. And this is once you start getting more into Docker containers, things that you can do. Um, what if the container stops? Uh, what if the container container fails? Or do you want it to restart always, sometimes? And those are things that you can do. You can have that flexibility to add that uh, to your container. And uh, what if we want to inspect our container more? Then what we could do is Docker container. Well, actually, since I deleted that container, let me, okay, just to inspect the container, what you can do is docker container inspect, and I'm just gonna use this one right here, so I'm gonna use 5e4, and when you do inspect, it's actually gonna inspect that container all the way through. It's gonna give you a whole bunch of details. So if it's docker container. And here you can actually inspect that container. It gives you a whole bunch of information about that container. Um, you can read uh, through it the ID when it was created, the you know node, the arguments, the state. I mean, it gives you all the information you need about that uh, container. And obviously, the more you work with containers, obviously, since this is only about containers, I really didn't talk too much about images and other things. But those are the basics that you really need with the containers. What you're going to be doing is starting containers, running containers, uh, stopping containers, deleting containers. Uh, and obviously you have a lot of options and commands, but those are the main, if anything, um, you can have a lot of like, you know, when you start doing like con container, um, you know, stop, you know, there are probably other options that you can add there. And those are things that you will do in more in depth. Uh, when you start working with containers, but I think I pretty much went through the most basic information that you will need to get going with containers.